Can I kick it? Yes, you can. This is the bike that Tribe Called Quest was singing about 30 years ago. Guys, Johnny Nerd out here. I got another custom e-bike build for you. I want to go over what bike this is, what we did to it, and some cool little gadgets that are on here. If you're new to this channel, uh, check out my other bikes. I do a lot of custom e-bike builds, do a lot of custom e-bike components, solar panel stuff. I do pre-made e-bike reviews. Uh, so if you're into stuff like that, check out my other videos. So this is the Cannondale CAD 3. This is obviously an older bike. It's got rim brakes on it, which I know a lot of people are like, oh, hey, don't do it, but if they work good, it's fine. I have no problem with rim brakes as long as they work good. But yeah, this bike is probably 30 years old, 25 years old at least. But you know, if you're like, hey, I like this bike, it fits me well, why not just convert it? There's no, just get the bike that you want, deck it out exactly how you want. It's just like building PCs even today, you know? It's the absolute best value. It's the absolute best spec wise. If you just want the absolute best specs suited to you for the absolute best price, building it is the way to go. Taking a regular bike and then converting it into an e-bike. Okay, so this is the Cannondale CAD 3. It's a hardtail mountain bike. Um, I don't think these are actual Volvo forks, but so we went with the BBS HD uh, 68 millimeter motor on here. It looks like we did need one spacer. I think we needed one spacer to bump the motor away from hitting the chain stay. Um, we went with the stock chain ring, clears the chain ring just fine. Added a nine speed e-bike e rated uh, KMC chain there. So it is the strongest chain available, arguably. Uh, we've got a gear shift sensor here. We put in a rear rack. Uh, we've got a 52 volt, 17 amp hour battery. This one's made by Unit Pack Power. Up here at the front, we've got the integrated uh, brake cutoffs, new brake levers. We've got the Egg Rider display. So this is the, the display that I use on my personal bike. This one's super small, but the cool thing about this one is that you could link it to your cell phone and have your cell phone be your display. The other cool things about this one is you could program your controller from your phone in real time, like on the fly while you're riding it, you could change it. Be like, oh, I want pedal assist. You could access essentially the, the Bafang programming tool, but on your phone while you're riding it. Um, and it shows you a lot of data. Like if you're a data nerd like I am, it'll show you in real time how many watt hours per mile you're burning, what your range is calculated by how, how much you've been riding in the last couple miles. So it's really cool if you're into efficiency and you wanna know exactly how much range you have on your battery and how much you've been using, this display is really cool. Uh, it is pretty expensive though. It's like an extra $100 upgrade roughly. So if you're not into data and you're not into that stuff, unless you just want like a really small sleek display, I, I might look at a different display. Next to it though, we have, this is really cool. This is the integrated front and rear headlight system made for the Bafang kits. It plugs in line in the wiring harness and it has its own little control here, but it has a headlight. You press the button and it turns on the headlight and the tail light. It also, when you hit the brakes, it makes the brakes, it has a brake light, it gets brighter. And even if you don't have that on, say all the lights are off, you hit the brakes, it'll turn on. So it's good for safety. If you've ever been behind a bike and you don't know if it's stopping, this is good because now you do know. It also has turn signals. However, the turn signals are very weak. You really would only see it at night if you were kind of following close behind, but it does have a horn too. Um, I have a baby sleeping, so I won't do it, but it's, it's pretty loud. It's actually, it'll get people's attention. It's like a weak car horn is what I would say. Um, we also put a stem riser on this so we could bring it up so it sits a little bit more upright. Adding this uh, front and rear headlight though, it does add some extra cabling, which is kind of a drawback. You could definitely cut it, splice it to length, but man, that would be super tedious. And I wouldn't recommend it unless you really have a lot of time and you're super confident on wiring because it's like those little tiny wires that you gotta match up and it, it would just be a pain. Oh, I also put a new Planet Bike uh, spring saddle on here. So this is a nice comfortable seat. All right, let's go do a Johnny Nerd Out performance test where we see how this thing performs climbing hills and top speed tests using only throttle. So 
So you can see 33 miles an hour. Not bad, it is really cold out here, so the battery is probably losing about 10% of its power. But hill climbing, you know, no no problem at all. This is a 46 tooth chain ring, and this is not a very big low gear. So if you were to swap out either one of those for, you know, make it closer to one-to-one, -one, this thing would climb hills like crazy. I wanna say it's about 1200 for the motor and battery. So if you just wanted to add the motor battery, it'd be about 1200. Plus everything here is probably about 1450 for this, this, this. I mean, if you already have a bike, you're talking about 1450 to make this bike. You know, obviously plus labor, plus shipping. Somebody shipped me this bike, so now I have to ship it back to them. Shipping is probably gonna be about 130 to 150 bucks each way. Something to keep in mind. But yeah, these brake lights, I, I really wanna put these on every single bike I do now. They're so freaking cool. Safety. Yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's all I wanna talk about here. All right, see you later, guys.